Elizabeth Ann Scum's article, Modern Moral Philosophy, from 1958. This is a very influential article in moral philosophy. Now, when we investigate the difference between what's right and what's wrong, there are many concepts involved. The consequences of our actions, the results of our actions, character or personality, moral obligation or moral law, happiness, the proper function of the human person, the commands of God, the useful or pragmatic or practical. Let's set most of these aside. We only need to look at three of the relevant moral concepts. Pre-modern moral philosophy, from Aristotle to Thomas Aquinas, was very interested in the concept of the proper function of the human person. This concept was fundamental in pre-modern ethics. But in modern moral philosophy, Hume, Kant, Mill, and so on, this concept was pretty much abandoned. It just wasn't a part of their investigations of right and wrong. But the modern moral philosophers were very much interested in moral law. They were interested in obligation. And what Anscombe says in her article is that their concept of moral obligation didn't make any sense. The modern philosophers tried to justify this concept or to prove that there really are some moral obligations, but they all failed. None of their justifications worked. So in fact, they didn't get that concept of moral law from any of the other ideas in their philosophy. None of those ideas could do the trick. They actually got that idea from a source they rarely or never even noticed, from Christianity and Judaism, and especially from the Torah in the Old Testament. When God gives us the Ten Commandments in the Torah saying, you shall not murder, and you shall not commit adultery, and other commandments, God is making commands, but God is also, by his authority, giving us moral laws. And this is the source, according to Hanscom, of the notion of moral law as it was employed in the modern philosophers. Anscombe says, in fact, that it is not even possible to have a coherent concept of a moral law unless you believe in a moral lawgiver. Now, God will get the job done. God has the authority. But these modern moral philosophers didn't appeal to God's authority to justify moral law. They appealed to other things. And so their explanations of moral law just didn't make any sense. And as a result, neither did anything else in modern moral philosophy. Thus says Anscombe. I pause to note that I'm not entirely sure she's entirely correct as a generalization about every modern moral philosopher. In particular, I suspect Locke may be a bit of an exception here. Moving on. A moral philosopher, realizing what Anscombe is trying to teach us, that this concept didn't make any sense in modern moral philosophy, a philosopher realizing the situation might do one of two things, maybe both. She might suggest reintegrating God's authority into our account of ethics. Or she might suggest going back to the pre-modern way of understanding right versus wrong as dependent on the proper functioning of human nature and not even using the same concept of moral obligation that the modern philosophers used. Anscombe does not recommend going back to a more religious conception of moral philosophy. Now, there are philosophers who do recommend that. See my video on the Euthyphro problem elsewhere on this channel. What Anscombe recommends, though, is going back to an understanding of ethics informed by the proper functioning of the human person, but updated and based on a better psychology and a better philosophy of psychology than we have available just now not on Aristotle's psychology. Incidentally, the recent development of what is called positive psychology might be just the sort of thing Elizabeth Anscombe had in mind.